The wind howled like a banshee, whipping salt spray against the weathered stone of Blackstone Lighthouse. Arthur, the new keeper, shivered despite his thick coat, the biting Atlantic chill seeping through every crevice. His predecessor had warned him of winter's fury, but nothing could prepare him for the sheer isolation and the oppressive atmosphere that clung to the lighthouse like a shroud. Arthur, a man who thrived on solitude, initially embraced the quiet. Days were spent maintaining the powerful lamp, its beam a defiant counterpoint to the encroaching darkness. Nights were filled with stargazing, the Milky Way, a breathtaking spectacle across the inky canvas of the sky. But as the weeks bled into months, a disquiet settled over him. Unexplained noises, footsteps on the deserted spiral staircase, whispers in the cavernous oil room, cold fingers skimming his neck in the dead of night. At first, he dismissed them as the tricks of wind and isolation. Then the visions began. Ethereal figures, translucent and sorrowful, materialized in the fog-washed windows, their faces contorted in silent screams. An old woman, her hair wild and eyes filled with despair, appeared by the lamp, beckoning him closer with a beckoning finger. Each apparition vanished as quickly as it came, leaving only a lingering unease and a growing conviction. Blackston Lighthouse was haunted. One stormy night, the power flickered, plunging the lighthouse into darkness. Panic clawed at Arthur's throat as the lamp sputtered and died. The foghorns outside, usually a comforting drone, sounded mournful, amplifying the isolation and fear. Then he heard it, a child's laughter echoing through the narrow corridors, tinged with an unsettling glee. Following the sound, he found himself at the top, the storm raging outside the barred windows. The laughter grew louder, seemingly right beside him. He spun around, heart pounding, but saw nothing. Then a gust of wind slammed the door shut, the latch clicking ominously, trapped. The laughter intensified, morphing into a chilling cackle. Suddenly, a cold light flickered in the corner. It emanated from a book he hadn't noticed before, leather-bound and ancient, lying open on a dusty chest. Hesitantly, he approached. The pages pulsed with an eerie luminescence, revealing sketches of shipwrecks, storms, and skeletal figures. As he drew closer, the words seemed to writhe and shift, forming a single sentence. Seek the offering, appease the watcher. Fear battled curiosity, but the promise of answers spurred him on. The book spoke of a ritual performed by the first lighthouse keeper, an offering made to appease the spirits of the sea in exchange for safe passage. But the offering wasn't gold or treasure, it was a life. Horror washed over him. The visions, the laughter, they were pleas, warnings from the restless souls lost at sea. The Watcher wasn't some benevolent entity, but a malevolent force demanding its due. With a desperate resolve, Arthur slammed the book shut. He wouldn't be part of that macabre pact. He wouldn't be the next sacrifice. The storm raged on, but he no longer cared. He found solace in the fury, a grim counterpoint to the terror inside. Dawn arrived, a bruised purple bleeding into the grey sky. Exhausted but resolute, Arthur repaired the generator, the lamp blazing to life once more. As the morning light chased away the shadows, the oppressive feeling lifted. The laughter never returned, nor did the figures. He stayed on at Blackstone Lighthouse, not out of duty, but defiance. He kept the lamp lit, not to appease the darkness, but to be a beacon of hope, a testament to the resilience of the human spirit in the face of the unknown. 
the book remained, a chilling reminder of the darkness that lurked beneath the waves. But Arthur knew the true story now. The haunting wasn't just about restless spirits. It was about the choices we make, the lines we refuse to cross, even in the face of overwhelming fear. Years later, when Arthur finally left Blackstone Lighthouse, the wind howled the same mournful song, but it sounded different now. It wasn't the wail of the damned, but the whisper of countless stories, a reminder of the darkness he faced and the light he chose to ignite. The haunting remained, etched in the weathered stone and the chilling legends whispered by the salty wind. But it was no longer his. He had faced it, understood it, and emerged not a victim, but a survivor, a silent guardian against the whispers of the deep. <laughs>